Hey everybody, this is Joe at Bergesons, and today we're going to talk about how to plant a bare root tree. I'll start with one of the most common questions, which is how long do I have to plant this thing? And I start off by not answering the question um, because it's more important that you pay attention that these roots never get dry to the touch. Now, if you just get one tree like this firefall maple here, and it's tied up tight and we put some wet leaves in there for you, you can take this home and throw it in your garage in a cool dark place for maybe two weeks and it would be fine. But I would rather you get it in sooner. But remember that the critical factor to planting bare root, uh, the reason that Home Depot and Menards can't sell bare root is because we have to teach you this one thing, which is that those roots must never be allowed to get dry to the touch. Now that's more of a risk when you get four or five trees in the same bag. And the risk occurs after you open the bag. You don't want to just leave them sitting out or uh, put one tree out by each hole and then go plant them consecutively. Because by the time you get to the last one, those roots are going to be looking dry and they're going to be getting harmed. So be real careful about always keeping the roots moist to the touch. When you take your package home, you throw it in the garage overnight, in the morning you'll see that the inside of this bag is condensed with moisture. That way you know that it's totally cool. If you have a bunch of trees, there might be more air circulation here and you can sprinkle some water down in once every day or two and, and, and uh, you know, swish it around in there. You don't wanna put your trees in water for an extended period of time. You can do it during the day that you're planting. Uh, otherwise, just keep them tightly wrapped up. Take one tree out of your bag at a time, wrap the rest back up, keep them cool in the shade and spray down the roots if you have to. Not even five minutes out in the sun for those roots. So dig your hole first. That's the number one critical factor to success with bare root. And I would say the second uh, most important factor, which I'll show you later, is leaving a dish around each plant that can hold water so that you can thoroughly water them in at planting. The second common question is how big of a hole should I dig? Well, you have to size your hole based on how big the, the tree is that you're planting and how big the root system of that tree is. So there's not one set answer. For most trees like this that people plant in their yard, I say dig a 28 inch wide hole by 12 to 14 inches deep if you can. It's okay to dig a bigger hole than you need if your back can handle it because loosening up that soil will be beneficial for the tree. Personally, I'm a little lazy, so I, I dig a little bit of a smaller hole um, if, I, if I can get by with it. Now, how to dig the hole, I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? But I have this tip, which is this, this spade right here. If you have these narrow, uh, what they're called a floral shovel, and then we sharpen them before we sell them, yeah, we sell them. And this is the ideal tool with which to dig a hole. Uh, because it's narrow, you can get it all the way in the ground when you step your foot on it. Uh, you do have to be careful because you can get it all the way in the ground. You can't just pry on that in your heavy clay right away because that'll snap it off right here. You have to gently jiggle it as you're digging. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig the hole for this tree now. So now is when you open the bag, once you've got your hole already dug, and again, remember that if you have multiple trees in the package, you want to take care of the ones you're not planting. Keep them wrapped up while you plant this one. Now, sometimes you will find uh, trees with one long root that goes way out here. Uh, probably best to cut that off. If you've got the energy to dig an extra big hole, extra wide hole, go ahead, knock yourself out. But the one thing you don't want to do is take those long roots and coil them up in a circle in the hole. Because just as one little branch on a tree has the potential to become a huge limb, one little root has the potential down the road to become a big, large root. And when that's going around in a circle at the base of the tree, it creates this convoluted kind of situation where it can weaken that tree, make it more likely to blow over in a windstorm 10, 20 years down the road. So it's better to cut them off than it is to coil them up. 
And that's different with shrubs, you don't have to, but with a tree, I'm gonna do a little trimming on this guy to make it fit in the hole. Especially because I was too lazy to dig a 28 inch hole. Now this also has a very deep root system and yeah, that might be the proper depth. Planting depth on trees is basically as shallow as you can without having any roots exposed. And remember that you're gonna need that two inch dish around it too. So you don't want any roots exposed when you're done, but you wanna just so barely cover the roots. Because trees in nature, they're planted, you can see the swelling at the bottom of the tree where it goes out into the roots. And every once in a while, you'll see a tree that looks just like a telephone pole going straight down in, and that's been planted too deep. It's not good for the tree in the long run. So you wanna plant a tree as shallow as you can while still covering the roots, still having a nice two inch dish around it. I think we're at a good depth here for this one. All the roots seem to fit in. You know, it's still bending a little bit, so I'm gonna do a little more trimming. The best roots are these fine fibrous roots, which are towards the center anyway, so it's okay to trim off some of these big thick ones that head out. There we go. This, by the way, is a Kentucky coffee tree. True North Kentucky coffee tree. Something that we're trying. So I wanted to get one out to see how they grow because I don't have one planted here yet. And again, I catch myself wanting to coil that root up, but I'm just gonna trim it off instead. Toss it down the hole and fill in the dirt. I put the clay that I hit over here so we don't have to use that. We'll put the good dirt down around the roots. Another question is peat. Here at Bergesons, we like to promote black bog peat, which is really good stuff for adding when you're planting something. But with trees, now we go back and forth on this and different people might tell you different things. My current uh, policy is you don't need to put peat in around a tree um, because it's gonna have to get used to what's there anyways. The roots are gonna go way beyond that. The only exception might be if you have really gravelly dry soil, then adding the peat might help to conserve moisture for the first summer or so. However, if you're in that heavy valley clay, it's probably best to use the soil that's there because if you have a bunch of soft peat in the hole, those roots can hit the edge of the hole and start going around in a circle, causing problems like we talked about. So just use the dirt that's there when you fill in the hole. Now notice that we have this depression around the tree. And by depression, I mean, I didn't fill the hole in all the way so that there's about two inches at the top that can hold water. The whole point of that depression, and it's very important, is to hold water so that the water can soak down slowly and thoroughly pack the soil around the roots. You don't have to do any packing of the soil manually because that watering will do it for you to the perfect degree, not too much, not too little. Um, I think you could have even deeper little depression than this, but you'll find out when you put the water in. We want to get four or five gallons of water in there to soak down, even if we have to come back later and add more to the hole. I have about four gallons in here. That brings up another question is, should I fertilize my trees when I plant them? Uh, I'll talk later about the shrubs. Yes, you fertilize shrubs, but with trees, no. You don't want to fertilize them. You don't want them growing too fast because that can cause susceptibility to winter damage and various diseases when they grow soft and lush. It's better for a tree to grow at its natural rate in the soil that's there unless you have some issues. So starting off planting a tree, you're gonna water it in with plain water and you need that dish to hold the water or else the water just runs away. So as you water it, the soil, as I mentioned, packs down and you can see that the tree is starting to tilt. That brings up the question, uh, should I stake my trees? And the answer in most cases is no. 
Do not stake a bare root tree. It doesn't, doesn't have leaves to catch the wind. It'll anchor itself with roots as it leaps out. It's better not to so that it can blow a little bit naturally in the wind. However, tomorrow after you plant the tree, it might have settled a little crooked. No worries, just pull it straight. Likewise, after a thunderstorm in the early summer now, it might be crooked. So while the ground is still wet, just go pull it straight. Uh, if at all possible, don't stake your trees. You probably will have to put on some sort of protection in the winter for the deer, however. So I'm just gonna straighten this up a little bit. And you can see that the water is still there in the hole. It takes time to soak in. If you didn't have that depression, it would have just run away and it wouldn't be soaking down deep where you need it. However, we might need to kick in a little bit more soil and water it again after this. The last issue that people ask about is moving forward. Um, how much water do I have to give the tree? Uh, and that's another thing that's really nice about bare root is that this tree here that I'm planting today will never be watered again. Uh, and it'll be fine. Now I don't tell you that uh, because you might have drier soil or we might get a hot dry summer where you do need to give your trees another squirt. But what's nice about bare root is that because they don't have any leaves on them when you plant them, they're not sucking up any water actively. And again, they'll just root in as they leaf out. And in most cases, you can get by with just this first initial watering. So you soak it really thoroughly and then forget about it till the middle of the summer. If we get a hot dry spell, there's no harm in watering it again some, but you don't have to worry too much about it. When you're planting smaller trees, especially and shrubs moving forward, it's gonna be really important not to let the grass creep in and grow right close to the tree. With this one, I think it'll be fine but with a smaller tree or a shrub, grass really inhibits the growth of trees. So you, you really want to keep it black. Even if you have to put that landscape fabric down with some mulch around it, one way or the other to keep the grass from growing right up to the base of the tree really helps the tree to grow faster. So leave a three foot circle where you cut out the sod and either keep it black, put some mulch in there, or put that fabric, that landscape fabric down and then a little bit of mulch on top of that. Now I wanna go over a few differences for how you plant bare root shrubs from planting bare root trees. In most cases with shrubs, you don't have to worry about getting them too deep. You can go up into the branches a little bit. The one exception is uh, a certain type of hydrangea, the Incredibles, the Annabelles, um, are this type of hydrangea called hydrangea arborescens that is kind of like a perennial. This is an incredible hydrangea here. And those you don't want to plant way up into the branches because that might inhibit the blooming. Um, so you can just kind of see where all those shoots are and just go midway in that area where all the shoots are. That would be called the crown of the plant. Um, so that's an incredible hydrangea. And while you're planting that one, remember if you have two shrubs, keep this other one wrapped up tight and in the shade while you're planting that. So I'm gonna take out this dogwood to show you. This is a Burgesson dogwood. And the way we propagate these, they end up with this kind of awkward long stem. It's totally okay to bury them kind of deep. The other difference is when you have big long roots on a shrub, it's okay to just shove them in the hole and not worry about them. You don't have to trim the roots on shrubs because they're not gonna develop these huge roots like a tree is down the road. And you don't have to worry about them blowing over in a windstorm. So that's one other difference with shrubs. If you want to add peat to your shrubs, that's a very good idea. Ferguson peat, black bog peat is like black gold for plants. Everything loves it, especially hydrangeas of all kinds. So how much peat do you wanna put in each hole? Again, that depends on how ambitious you are in digging the size of your holes. Um, if you really want to baby your hydrangeas and you're in some really tough alkaline heavy clay, you can actually dig a big enough hole to get two full bags of peat for each plant. Um, when I plant a rose bush, I end up using about one bag of peat. If you 
uh, don't want to get that much peat, uh, a half a bag is still going to help. So anywhere between a half a bag and two bags of peat per plant is a good idea when planting shrubs. Um, another difference is that fertilizer, yeah, you, you, you do want to fertilize your shrubs when you plant them. And what we use is a water-soluble fertilizer. We use Jax. Um, this is Jax all-purpose. You can use miracle Grow; it's just fine. You can't put on too much as long as you mix it according to directions. One tablespoon per gallon. So with that five gallon pail that I used earlier, you would put four tablespoons in there, um, three or four, let's say, and um, that's gonna get your shrubs off to a great start. Um, so you do wanna fertilize, you can use peat, you don't have to trim the roots, and in general, you can sink them kind of deep up into the branches. That's how shrubs differ from planting trees. Now, these roots exposed like that, they're still glistening wet, but again, remember, you don't wanna leave them sit out for much longer at all. Get them in the bag and tied up again if you're not ready to immediately plant them. That's the critical factor to success with their root anything. That and the depression that holds water. I give this lecture hundreds of times a year and I hope it sinks in. So, all right, thanks for watching.